scholars have marveled at it. Within a decade, Arab forces overran the Byzantine and Persian armies and conquered Iraq, Syria, Palestine, Persia, and Egypt. Muslim armies proved to be formidable conquerors and effective rulers, builders rather than destroyers. When different peoples, including the Turks, accepted Islam of their own free will, the Islamic empire grew even more and it became the greatest power in the world during that period. One of the most important facets of this empire was that it provided the stage for a scientific development previously unmatched in history. At a time when Europe was living through the Dark Ages, the Islamic world created the greatest legacy of scientific knowledge seen in history to that date. The sciences of medicine, mathematics, geometry, astronomy, and even sociology were developed systematically for the first time. Some commentators try to link this Islamic scientific development to the influence of the ancient Greeks. But the real source of Islamic science was the experimentation and observations of Muslim scientists. In his book, The Middle East, Professor Bernard Lewis, an expert in Middle Eastern history, explains it like this. The achievement of medieval Islamic science is not limited to the preservation of Greek learning nor to the incorporation in the corpus of elements from the more ancient and more distant East. This heritage which medieval Islamic scientists handed on to the modern world was immensely enriched by their own efforts and contributions. Greek science, on the whole, rather tended to be theoretical. Medieval Middle Eastern science was much more practical, and in such fields as medicine, chemistry, astronomy, and agronomy, the classical heritage was clarified and supplemented by the experiments and observations of the medieval Middle East. The secret was the scientific and mental discipline taught by the Quran to Muslim scientists. The lines written by a Muslim scientist of that period in his private diary strikingly demonstrate how much alive the Quran-based concept of science was. Then for a year and a half, I devoted myself to study. I resumed the study of logic and all parts of philosophy. During this time, I never slept the whole night through and did nothing but study all day long. Whenever I was puzzled by a problem, I would go to the mosque, pray, and beg the Creator of all to reveal me that which was hidden from me and make it easy for me that which was difficult. Then at night, I would return home, put a lamp in front of me, and set to work reading and writing. I went on like this until I was firmly grounded in all sciences and mastered them as far as humanly possible. Andalusia, where most Muslim scientists were born and raised, became a major center of innovation and development, especially in medicine. Muslim physicians were trained in such varied fields as pharmacology, surgery, ophthalmology, gynecology, physiology, bacteriology, and hygiene, and they made important discoveries which laid the foundations of modern science. Here are some of them.
The advanced scientific culture of the Islamic world paved the way for the Western Renaissance. Muslim scientists acted in the knowledge that their investigation of God's creation was a path through which they could get to know him. With the transfer of this mentality to the Western world, the advance of the West began. Medieval Europe was ruled by the dogmatic regime of the Catholic Church.